Hello drone users and uh, welcome to a new video about one of my biggest passion which is drones. So today we are talking about a very interesting uh, subject. Uh, you are a foreigner and you want to fly your drone in the US. How do you do that? It seems very complicated uh, but ultimately is not and I'm gonna guide you through the steps to make sure next time you will be in the US and you are gonna have your drone with you, you will be able to drive safely without any issue. And if you're following this channel since a while now, uh, you probably realize I already made another video on how to fly uh, safely drones in Europe, so how to obtain a drone license for the European community and uh, uh, what's the reason I'm doing uh, a video for the US? Well, mostly because next year I'm planning to travel all around the world with my wife and of course I want to bring my drone with me. And uh, in this case, I want to make sure I will comply with all the rules and regulations on the many countries. In some of them, there are, of course, a set of regulations and rules that are very well defined. In some others, not really. So just for the ones where there is a clear path, I will make sure to have all the certificates and make sure I will be flying safely. If you are interested about our project of traveling the world, you can take a look at the playlist Connection Earth Expedition and you will be able to find all the videos about our preparation for this big trip and this big adventure that is gonna start in middle 2025. So without further ado, let's go into the topic of this video, which is uh, how do I fly my drone as a foreigner in the US? To start, you first of all need to take a look at this webpage from the FAA, which is the Federal Aviation Administration. And here you can find all the information about the drones. So everything is actually on this website, on this webpage, and it's quite well clear actually and uh, for me as a first timer when I first uh, saw this uh, web page it was quite easy to follow the, the steps but again I want to make sure to make it even simpler for you so you can take your drone certificate and register your drone very easily. The key here is to understand the differences in between the two main categories. The first one is the recreational flyers and community-based organization and the second one is the certified remote pilots, including commercial operators. To understand which type of drone flyer you are, you can take a very easy uh, quiz, uh, five questions that will help you understand uh, which type of category you are in. So in my case, after the five uh, questions, uh, I was categorized as a recreational flyer. So in this case, uh, I will follow the rules for a recreational flyer. So once we understand what type of uh, drone flyer uh, we are, we can go ahead and read the rules. In this case, for the recreational flyer, there are nine rules. So the very first one is that, of course, you are gonna fly for recreational purposes only. So in this case, you are gonna fly your drone for your interest, like, you know, you want to take pictures, uh, you want to take videos, maybe your family, maybe your trip, your vacation. That's exactly what uh, we are gonna do while traveling around the world. The second rule that you can find on the uh, recreational flyers is to follow the safety guidelines of an FAA recognized community based organizations. So these organizations are, uh, you know, community of people that really likes, for example, you know, uh, drones or maybe they are like sports aviation organizations. Uh, and uh, one of the main points of this organization is really to uh, stress the safety aspect. Uh, so, for example, if we connect uh, to the AMA, the Academy of uh, Model Aeronautics, uh, one of the key pillars for this uh, organization is the safety code. Uh, all these safety uh, measures are anyway kind of very basic in a sense that if you already are a drone pilot, for example, from Europe, uh, and you already have a drone license, then you will find uh, some of the key safety guidelines that are very, let's say, that are integrated into the European uh, driving uh, uh, license for drones. For example, the beware of no-fly zones, or for example, the I am safe, so illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and emotion. 
So all these things probably are already resonating to you. The third point is always to keep your drone within the visual line of sight or maybe use a visual observer with, uh, uh, who is co-located uh, and in direct communication with you. So this is to make sure you're not gonna lose your drone first of all and second that you're not gonna commit any damage with your drone because you don't see the drone any, any longer and so it's uh, difficult also to uh, understand uh, where the drone is uh, and uh, if there is any danger around the drone. So always keep the drone on the visual line of sight. The fourth uh, rule, which is by the way very basic, is to not interfere uh, with other aircraft, uh, helicopters, small uh, you know, airplanes, uh, you know, any type of uh, vehicle that stays in the air you need to avoid as much as possible and you need to keep away from of course airports and uh, other places in which uh, you know you can find uh, those um, aircraft the fifth point is to fly at or below FAA uh, authorized altitude in controlled airspace uh, and only with prior FAA authorization by using uh, LAA and C or drone zone now what this means means that in the US there are designated uh, no fly zone areas and there are also designated uh, class areas so you can refer to all the documents in the description below I'm not gonna enter inside uh, all these technicalities uh, but just for you to know we have different classes class B class C class D uh, class E and for example the class G if I remember correctly is the one in which it's kind of uncontrolled in a sense that you are not around controlled uh, airspace but still there are rules to follow uh, to make easier for you to understand in which area you are in there will be an application that I'm gonna present you uh, very soon the sixth point which is highly related to the previous one is to fly at or below 400 feet in class G and the class G as I said is the uncontrolled class to make easier uh, for you to understand in which airspace you're flying your drone you can uh, download the air control which is uh, this application right here it's uh, super handy because it gives you all the information about uh, you know the places you are in so it's uh, just using your location now of course I'm in Italy so you cannot see myself in the US but Whenever I will be driving in the US, uh, I will check this up constantly to make sure I will operate my drone in the right place. So as you can see in this application, you can log your flights, uh, you can log your LAA and C, you can log your incidents, uh, but you can most importantly check uh, the different uh, uh, map layers and uh, understand where to fly safely. The next point is to take the recreational US safety test or trust. Now, this is something that once you have it, once you complete this test, you always need to bring with you the proof of completions. You can just print it and bring it with you or maybe have it online on your, on your iPhone, on your smartphone. You can take this trust very easily because there are specific uh, uh, website that can allow you to take it for free like I did now once you have the trust certificate you also need to make sure you're gonna register your drone very similar to what happened in Europe where you need to have your driving permit for the drone plus you need to register as an operator and have the little QR code to put on your uh, drone same thing here is gonna be a code and you need to register on the FAA website one thing to keep into account is that uh, starting 16 of September 2023 there has been a big change because your drone requires an FAA registration number uh, and it will also require to be broadcast uh, on the remote ID. But what does it mean in short? It means that your drone needs to be kind of provided of a digital ID or maybe a digital driving plate uh, uh, where you will be able to see uh, the distance, uh, the altitude, uh, the, um, you know, the serial number of the drone and this is for security reasons. After you have taken the trust uh, and you have registered your drone, you need to make sure that your drone complies with the latest uh, rule about the remote ID. To understand if your drone complies or not with this remote ID uh, rule, 
uh, there is a specific website there is a search and you can check for your drone uh, by the for example the manufacturer or maybe the model if your drone uh, doesn't have a remote ID then uh, you will not be able to fly no I'm joking you will be able to fly but only on FAA recognized identification areas or in short uh, FRIAs so these areas are defined geographic areas where drones can be flown if they don't have a remote ID equipment. Also these areas can be found on the application I showed before, the air control. The last rule, of course, and this is uh, very basic but very important, is do not operate your drone in a manner that endangers the safety of the national aerospace system. So now that we took the time to review the rules uh, for the recreational flyer, let's go in the practical steps to get uh, the certification and to register your drones. So very first thing, you need to create a FAA account uh, as a first step and activate it uh, through the activation email. You don't need to be a US citizen to do so. I did it myself uh, without any issues. The second, I took the test to understand what type of uh, drone flyer I was. In this case, I uh, ended up being a recreational flyer. Third step is to check if your drone has remote ID to make sure that we will comply with the, the new rules from FAA. The fourth point is to take the trust. And uh, I took mine in the website uh, UAV Coach, a very comprehensive website about drones, uh, drone regulation, etc. etc. This website is one of the few that is fully recognized by FAA to release a trust certificate. So in this case, as I already mentioned, the trust provides educational and testing on important safety and regulatory information. If you fly your drone recreationally under the exception for the recreational flyer, you must pass the test before you fly. It was really easy to take, especially because if you are already a drone pilot, maybe coming from Europe, I will be very straightforward, it takes around 30 minutes or less, uh, it's for free, so, so great service provided by UAV Coach and good thing is that you will have uh, unlimited uh, uh, attempts to pass the test. As I already mentioned, you do not need to be a US citizen to take the trust. One little thing to remember is do not pay for trust uh, exams because the trust uh, is always for free. Uh, so pay attention if uh, websites are telling you you need to pay something because that's not true. Once you will register on the FAA drone zone, uh, you will be asked what type of uh, flyer you are, part of the 107 or a recreational flyer. Make sure to choose the recreational flyer account to fill in with all the information uh, and uh, uh, there will be a registration fee which is $5. <coughs> When you register, you will receive a registration number that applies to all the unmanned aircraft you own and operates under the exception for recreational flyers. The registrations are valid for three years. After the three years, you will need to renew the registration. So once you completed all these steps, you go back to the FAA website and you go on the FAA Drone Zone Services. Here you will be able to find the drone owner and pilots. You click there and launch the drone owner and pilot's dashboard. So once you will have access to the registration flyer dashboard, here you will be able to manage your devices. You can add the devices, remove devices. Maybe you sell uh, your previous drone, your old drone. You can go ahead and remove it, add the new one. And at the same time, the most important thing is that you will have access to the registration number. All drones must be marked with your registration number. Uh, there is a nice infographic uh, that show you how to do so. Now, all this is standard for US citizen and non-US citizen. So, for example, you're a tourist, you want to travel to the US with your drone, you need to follow exactly the same steps as the US citizen. The main difference is that uh, as a foreigner, you will need to uh, do a notice of identification or NOI. This uh, allows you to notify the FAA that you are going to travel with your foreign drone in the US. An NOI can be submitted at no cost by visiting the FAA drone zone and the NOI is also required for flying both recreational and under part 107 which is the kind of commercial part of drones. 
with a standard remote ID drone or with a drone using a remote ID broadcast module. So once you will submit the NOI, you will receive a confirmation of identification or CID and this uh, is always important to have and to carry with you. The person operating a foreign registered drone must have the CID and the drone control station and be able to produce the CID when requested by the FAA or a law enforcement officer. Having an electronic copy is also acceptable. So once you have completed all these little steps that, to be honest with you, at the beginning seems to be very complicated, but ultimately are quite easy to follow, you will be able to fly your drone easily, safely in the US. So we are at the end of the video. I hope you found it uh, interesting and informative. If I forgot something, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any question, please drop it in the comment section below. And if you are curious to know how to get certified uh, uh, for your drone pilot in Europe, you can take a look at this video right here or there. And of course, follow us if you are curious about Connection Earth Expedition, our trip around the world. There will be many, many photos and videos that I will publish as soon as we will leave. Make sure to follow us and of course, thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Ciao, see you on the next one.